Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Decking Around Kickstarter Edition. Today we're going to be taking a look at any decks that have funded in the past seven days, any decks new to Kickstarter in the past week, and any decks that are going to be ending their round of funding in the next seven days. But before we jump into it, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And please ring the bell. So Steve, I gotta say we have a uh, pretty big week this week considering it's the week before Christmas. I'm a little surprised by that, but hopefully we have some good decks in there. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, who's brave enough to uh, put their campaign up this week. Absolutely, man. But before we jump into that, let's take a quick word from our sponsor. Hummingbird Feathers mimics the shimmer of a hummingbird in motion. Meticulously created with a specialized printing process using multiple holographic foils. Stunning tuck design and sculpted embossing with master letterpress creation. Featuring limited, standard, and gilded three-deck sets. Pre-order yours today at MarvelousDecks.com. All right, so let's see what we got going on here with Kickstarter this week. First up, let's say congratulations to the Paper Mario unofficial playing cards for funding. Unofficial. Yeah. Congratulations to the Mothman and other Cryptids of North America playing cards for funding. And congratulations to Not Playing Cards, the Luxury Collection for funding with 200... Uh, rushing. That's a, that's a top 10 finish too for... Kickstarter campaigns for playing cards, isn't it? Two hundred eighty-seven thousand, I think. Oh, definitely. I think that definitely. puts them around somewhere around maybe like num number seven or eight in all-time highest. So congratulations to Alex and Riffle Shuffle on that one. Yep. And ending in the upcoming seven days, we have the State Dogs playing cards. We have the Bicycle Stronghold, twenty twenty playing cards deck. We have the Satanic playing cards. Dang, they crushed okay. it too. We have the Hamsadek Prajna edition. And let's see what we got going on this week. First up, it looks like we have the Lines deck of elements. So let's see what that looks like here. Uh interesting, interesting style to it, I have to say. It's very kind of cartoony, but in a fun way. A lot of like action and feel to it. Um, let's see what we got here. Interestingly enough, the one-way one faces, yeah, one-way faces. I mean, definitely a good opportunity to uh, show off the art. You know, this obviously doesn't look too much like a functional deck. I don't think that was the idea. I think it was really meant to be an artistic deck, so I think a one-way design is fine. Though some people may back, not want to back because of that, I think. Um, let's see what we got here. Team, paper quality, goal of the campaign, why put art on poker cards, unique faces for... USPCC. That's good, at least. Yeah. Interesting. Doesn't say who it's fulfilled by. Yeah, just based on the campaign itself, I'd say this isn't someone who's, like, very active, necessarily, in the uh, playing card community. Right. But USPCC, solid choice for printing there. The one thing I would like to see a little bit more is the story behind it. I think while there's a good a good uh, recounting of the deck itself and the artwork and everything like that, and the campaign is pretty well structured, it still lacks the story. It doesn't necessarily have a story behind it that draws me into the art. It talks about the theme, but it all talks about it in a very kind of cold way, I guess you could say. Um okay. Let's see what we're looking at. Two pack of lines, deck of elements for fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars shift oh. for two decks. That's not bad at all. And that's anywhere in the world. Any, yeah, anyone. Yeah, that's really phenomenal. Interesting. Uh, so yeah, you yeah. can definitely tell though this isn't a. I mean, that, that's gonna. He might actually lose money on that. Yeah, <laughs> but you can tell too. It's not someone within the community because it goes from six decks to eight decks to ten. There's no brick tier, then it goes to 50 and 100. So it's someone who's definitely more in the art community, and that's perfectly fine. But the one thing I would say is do a little bit of research before jumping into the playing card community, because you are I think you're missing a, a target segment here that you really could have utilized to help drive this campaign a little bit more. Um, but yeah, like you said too, fulfillment information would be key. Uh, put the information about who's going to print farther up top as well. I think it makes it all come together a little bit more. And ultimately, yep. tell the story. Tell your story about this deck to help people really get drawn in. The artwork is cool. It's fun and vibrant. That's definitely going to draw people in. But the story is what helps them stay and makes them want to support. So Yeah, I mean, I, I don't understand what the dealer button is. Like, what's that all about? Yeah. You know? 
Yeah, I mean, maybe in the, in the scheme of things, like a poker dealer, you know? But again, like, I think from the community aspect, like, this isn't a poker deck, so... Right, uh, yeah. So, good luck. Good luck. Yeah, I think there's a lot of potential, but definitely some things that need to be tweaked. Next up, we have the Fractured playing cards, which I don't know... I agree with you, we talked about this a little bit earlier. This deck looks yeah. very familiar, and I don't know why. Um, dives right into the story... Good size pictures, very visually satisfying to see. Concepts, cool, cool, cool. Let's see. It's the Mako deck. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The see, I I'm I'm remembering something that reminds me of this deck color wise though. Also. Really. Yeah, and I don't remember what it is. If anyone knows what deck this is similar to, definitely comment down below. Let us know what you think. Um, it may just be that there's a similar geometric-esque deck with similar colors. I think that may be the case, but it's not a bad-looking campaign. They touch on the information. Perfect fulfillment there. Affected myself, shipped out. So self-fulfilling, while I say there's nothing wrong with that, I'm glad you put something in there about it. It is a difficult thing to do, so be aware of that. There is a lot of costs associated with shipping yourself that you may not be aware of that a fulfillment service could do better or less expensive. Um, the one other thing I would say as well is bringing a lot of this up to the top in a little bit more of a bullet pointed area so people could see that this is printed by USPCC, traditionally cut, air cushion finish, all these fun details there. Um, the, yep. the other thing too, is I would mention the stock. I know in the stretch goals, you mentioned that this is a uh, thin crushed paper stock is an add on or a, a stretch goal, but what's the, what's the stock you're going to be printing on now? Is it B or bicycle? Is it obviously it's not crushed initially, but B versus bicycle can actually make a pretty big difference as well, especially for someone who's looking at using this for handling. And since it looks like a cardistry oriented deck, I think that would make an impact. Um, let's see what we're looking at price wise. $19 shipped. It's a little bit on the high end for me, I think. Um, with shipping right now so high for the holidays, I can kind of understand to some extent. Yeah. But I still think for me, this would probably sell better as a $16 to $17 fully shipped deck because it is a cardistry deck and it's something that if people really like it, they're going to want to pick up a couple and they're going to want to be able to get it at a reasonable price at that point. You know, you're at the $20 mark, and I think this is something actually interesting to touch on, from the point of view for cardistry, at the $20, $19, $20 mark, you're actually really starting to compete with some of the major brands who can circumvent Kickstarter, and so they can do decks less expensive. In order to be competitive and get a foothold in that cardistry segment, you may have to make a little less money on a deck in order to get your foot in the door and get the traction you want to then grow the brand in the future. Yeah. But good luck. I think this looks like an interesting deck. That price point, again, could be a little lower, but isn't bad. So good luck, Jason. Next up, we have the Nobel Prize Series Playing Cards Chemistry Edition. So I have to say, I'm... It's an interesting, interesting uh, case. Yeah, I, I, idea I'm not necessarily it. sure how I feel about it from a visual point of view, but I, I really respect the creativity aspect of it. Um, yeah. something we haven't seen before, and I really love to see when people try and make fun thematic additions to their campaign. So yeah. nice job there. At least. I mean, that's cool right there. USPCC, Gambler's Warehouse, that's cool. So the one thing I would say too with USPCC is make sure you're actually using their known terms. 325 GSM cardstock with linen finish and two by black core pretty much means... I don't want to say it means no, nothing, it's but it's not as easily recognizable as Bicycle, B, or Standard versus Premium. I'm pretty sure the 325 GSM stock is actually their B stock. And if anyone, it, it may be, it may actually be their Bicycle, but I think it's their B stock. Um, if anyone knows, definitely let us know down below. But yeah, think about using the, the industry terms that are used there. So USPCC, Bicycle, or B stock, crushed or non, or you don't have to say non-crushed, but crushed if it is um filled by gamblers i think that's awesome all right up top which i think is great as well um yeah. i like the, the I, I think that's really cool it's a cool idea yeah no it really is and i like how cohesive it is and how it all fits together where it really looks clean yeah. even if the deck isn't in there which i think is great yeah i mean picture picture wise take a picture like 
The other pictures are great. That picture right there where you can see, like, I don't know if that's a beer can in the background and yeah. it just looks a little... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the background yeah, like, should definitely... Like, all the other images are really cohesive and they look great. And then you have this image that just looks like yeah. trash in the back, you know? Blue and red versions yeah. of the deck, a limited edition of the deck as well. Um... So the one thing I would say, too, is there's a lot of pictures and not much text. I think a, a well-balanced campaign is just as important to get the information out there because you can look at a lot of the pictures, but by the time I get down to about halfway through, oh, geez, more than halfway through the campaign, yeah. I don't really know much about this other than the bare bones information. Right. You know, and again, it's easy to tell somewhat of a story with pictures, but to tell the full story, you need that text as well. So right now you're gearing this towards people who are absolutely going to fall in love with the design, but you're not making any effort to sell people who are on the fence. And that's where the story and the text can really come into play. Um, gold foil edition, $12 a deck. So that's the interesting thing too. This, this price point looks really inexpensive for what this is. So the classic gold deck, foil, that must be the tuck case. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was this one right here. That one. So it looks like yeah. it could be metallic ink on the back, but again, I'm not sure because there's no text around it. Um, so $19 a deck shipped without the flask. The gold ed edition is 21 ship. I'd be curious to see again what the actual inclusion from a uh, artistic and creative point of view is from the gold edition. Is it gold metallic ink on the back of the cards plus gold foil on the tuck, or is it just gold foil on the tuck? Maybe that $19 price point would be a little better for that gold edition if it's literally just the tuck being um, different. This is also three decks if you take a look at it. So there's a blue, a red, and the gold edition. The classic plus the flask, it's only $34. That's not bad. Yeah. For like something that like an add-on like that, 36 for the gold plus the gold flask. Plus. Yeah. So... Prices aren't bad. I mean, yeah, they're really like not. The standard, the standard case is fifteen bucks. It says. Yeah. yeah. So, the other thing that stands out to me on this is the goal seems low. Like really low for three yeah. decks. For three decks. Yeah, that's. I mean, they're gonna lose money. Big USPCC time. plus this flask. Yeah, that's a very very low goal, and it may be that they're hoping for momentum beyond the goal to help kind of really fund everything. But, you know, like Steve just said, that's a very risky maneuver because you could hit $5,500 and you now have an obligation to print three decks. Even if you only print 1,000 each, you're way over that 55000 or 5500 yeah, mark. Yeah, that's more than $9,000. Yeah. That easy. So that's one thing I would genuinely be careful about with this is you want to make sure. And they're giving away coins for free. So that's even another yeah. additional... Yeah, if you look over there, it says, um, not that one. There was another tier that got. Oh yeah, coins. the first seven backers. Uh, the first seven yeah, backers. Are automatically printing coins. Yeah, and like, do coins are not exp not cheap either? Like, to me, and here's the other thing about this, and I'll be very candid about it. I think when you see such a low goal for such high expectations, it makes me nervous because now I'm yeah. I'm concerned that this may not be a campaign that the intentions to actually create it's yeah. very cool or, or or their intentions are to create it but once they realize that they're six grand in the hole after the campaign ends yeah it's just that's when they're like i can't do that and i'm just gonna take the money <laughs> yeah and i think it becomes very uh very it lacks transparency people know this isn't going to cost five thousand dollars to fully produce this is a fifteen thousand dollar goal minimum I'd say if you include the coins, the three decks, plus the flasks, that's a lot. And people are okay with seeing a high goal at that point. So don't feel like you need to create a low goal to create false you know, success when in reality right. it actually creates a, a risk and maybe potential you know, concern with people who would have backed it otherwise. So I think there's a lot of potential for this deck. I think people who are into science and into this custom kind of uh, – Flask case are, would jump all over this, but I think there's concerns around it that need to be addressed otherwise, because how are you going to fund this at, say you only make it to $5,100, how do you fund this? So, and it may be that it's yep. being self-funded as well, and if that's the case, then I think some transparency in the story about this is important as well. 
you know, even a pie chart potentially saying, hey, we already have X amount of dollars to fund this. We know it's going to cost us, say we say $15,000. We know it's going to cost us fifteen. dollars We already have ten dollars set aside for this. We need this extra five to get us over the line. That at least yeah. gives that transparency where people are like, all right, they're dedicated and serious about this, not just like they threw out an idea and have no idea how much it's going to cost. So yeah. something to consider. I like the idea though. So good luck. I hope you guys do well with this. I just make sure you don't get yourself too deep in the hole because of that goal there. Exactly. Good luck, man. Next up, we have the Tiny 2 Mini Playing Cards, which... Oh, these are Kate, Caitlin's deck. Caitlin's deck. <laughs> so I think, I feel like deck, these guys just created the Tiny 1 not too long ago. I want to look tiny at this. Tiny Micro. Yeah, so this just funded a couple weeks ago, I want to say. Let's see here. November 10th. They're already shipping, though, if you look yeah, up. Yeah, so... Yeah, good on them. So that's awesome that these are already heading out. I think that's encouraging to see that they waited until they started shipping their previous campaign before they started a new one. I think that's a great idea, especially for newer creators. Um, that being said, this looks very similar to their previous campaign. I think it's cute, like a little idea. Much more durable card stock, new plastic case for the cards, redesigned card faces and back. So it's not just a, re uh, a recolor. They really put a lot more effort into it. This is a cute like little deck if you're looking for a, a simple travel deck. Maybe bring on the plane with you, something like that. Um, price point at eleven dollars. It's not bad. Yeah, I think it's worthwhile. So yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know how, gonna, how much it costs to create mini decks. tiny decks. Yeah. You know, <laughs> know. if it's the same price or or what, you know. Yeah. Um, well, and so I'd say yeah. Yeah, it, okay. well, they don't talk much about print run or fulfillment on this or anything like that, which I still think is something worthwhile for them to talk about. Who's making these? Um, where are you fulfilling? And what's the print run going to be? Because $750, who knows? That $750 could print, you know, 500 mini decks. I have, I have no idea. Like you said, you know, we don't, we have, don't have much background in that. But having seen them already fulfill one campaign, I'm pretty confident that they that goal is probably within what they know they need to make this happen. But it also could be they're only printing 100 decks. I'm not sure. So right. I think uh, a little more transparency into that would make people more comfortable. But also it would help other creators who are interested in this kind of get an idea. You know, share some of that knowledge that you've gained. This, this is a fun little deck, though. So good luck to you on that, Elk Lab. <laughs> Next up we have... Sp Spaghetti playing cards. Oh, got a little hiccup there. Uh, designed by Kiran. Yeah. Or um, Asakapa. Asakapa, yeah. Um, let's see what we got here. A magic shop out in Italy. Yeah, and Kiran's designed some phenomenal decks. Some of uh, Jack Noble's decks, which are just amazing. He does really cool work. Um, with this deck, we decided to bring an essential part of Italian cultural culinary tradition directly into your hands. A deck of cards created for those who love the classic look, ideal for gameplay and format, but also appreciate discovering custom designs and every small detail. Very cool, uh, very concise, but good story already. You know, if you are curious about it, it's not just like, hey, we like spaghetti, so we try to do it. Like, they talk about it being part of Italian culinary heritage. They really pull it in. Um, fun little kind of OPC-style custom courts there. I dig, uh, you know, it, it's definitely a unique back design the tablecloth pattern throws me a little bit because isn't it usually white and red but here's the thing i i, I don't know if white and red is like the american version of italian food <laughs> type it, it very well could cloth. be yeah it, it could be that this green and white one that we see in the background here is what uh the actual italian yeah, coloring yeah which i think is cool though i like the fact to buy magicians for magicians i like that they're targeting a specific segment too this is something that we don't see a lot of campaigns do successfully they know who their target audience is. They are addressing their target audience of magicians. If you're a collector or a cardist and you like this deck, by all means, get it. But they know who they're working to actually primarily drive this campaign. Hence why the deck comes in mnemonic stack. But I think that's like really cool that they talk about it. Um, manufactured by USPCC. Yeah, yeah, double backer and a, and a little uh, gaff card there. Yeah. Brand new deck that's by SA. Yeah. Manufactured by USPCC. Um, Look at that. So, they yeah. The, I love this. The, the, the separate languages, the two different languages in their own section. Absolutely Bravo. brilliant. This makes it so much Bravo. more cohesive. And we've talked about this so many times. 
That is yeah. so much more cohesive. It makes it so much easier for everyone to read this and actually get invested in the campaign. And the one thing I would love to see with this, and I think this is probably more of a Kickstarter limitation than anything else, I wish there was a way, and I don't know if there is, if someone does know, comment below, to put like a little table of contents up top where you could say English version, Italian version, and click and it would scroll you down. That may be a Kickstarter limitation. If Kickstarter sees this and they want to allow anchor tagging in HTML, that would be a great idea. But I think this is yeah. so well done for the bilingual or multilingual campaigns. This makes me so happy to see. So I'll be very yeah. honest about that. Uh, let's take a look at the price point here. Oof. So this is where... There is no fulfillment on it. I will say fulfillment could save this deck significantly. Um, $33 That's shipped. Right. $33 yeah. is a lot of money. $33 shipped. It costs three more euros or about $450 extra per deck just to ship it. So the de the shipping costs almost fifty or almost 30% more than the deck itself. Um, at $15 price point on this, if they could have found a reasonable price point for a magician deck, I would have almost said even like a 13 plus five shipping for 18 out the door on this would have been reasonable, um, a little high, but reasonable. I would definitely say look into us fulfillment, either through gamblers, art player Murphy's on this as a secondary, um, there's nothing wrong with splitting fulfillment either. If you are European based, which in this case, Iso Capo is based in Italy. Do your European fulfillment yourself, save some money there, but definitely look into US fulfillment if you want to expand your market. One of the things I will say too, and I think a lot of creators can, you know, back me up on this is for playing cards, a significant majority of your backing is going to come from US backers, which means that shipping yep. to the United States, while may not be your main concern because you're not based there, is important to most campaigns, especially if you think where your geographic uh, audience is going to be. Yep. I would 100% say reach out to someone on this one. I think the campaign itself has potential. I think it's so well put together. This is probably one of the better campaigns we've seen this year just on simplicity, but getting the message across. The other thing I would like to see is a little bit more information about the cards right in this section here, just because they talk about the cards, but this is a great opportunity for them to mention USPCC as well as the stock itself. You know, I think that's one thing we keep missing here today is is it bicycle? Is it B? Is it crushed or is it not? Yeah. Tell. Well done on. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's crushed. It just says air cushion. Yeah. So we don't know if it's B or bicycle. But... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I think that goal is even reasonable. And I think that goal would be a lot easier to hit if the shipping to the US was completely yeah. overhauled. I, mean, I think that's what's holding back for sure. Yeah. So good luck on this one. And, you know, I know, I think we've had some chats with Aso Capo and Kappa in the past. I'll reach out and let you guys know to check out somewhere like Gamblers or Murphy's or AOP just so that you can bring that shipping down because this would be a fun deck to see and it shouldn't be held back just by shipping. Yep. All right. Good luck, guys. Let's see what we got next. The Harmony Back Playing Cards from Arcadia Playing Cards. So this is a relaunch. Back, back at it. Yep. This is a, a relaunch of the Harmony Back that was on not too long ago. A um, yep. little bit of a longer campaign ending in January, so not a big deal that it's launching in late December, though. Again, you know... There was a little bit of a revamp with this one because I think the original was 14 days, correct? Yeah, Somewhere and around? he had a gaff pack that okay. was included, um, and I guess that's uh, the add-on this time. Do me a favor, click on uh, the uh, the created there yeah. for a second. I'm just curious to see how many backers were on the last campaign. Does it show? 208, yeah. Okay. So where are we at with... Oh, 50, 50 backers that are right. holding on. I mean, he's really close. He is yeah, really close. Back. $3,300 shy. And he's got three weeks to go. Yeah, and I gotta say, I like the way this jumps in. I like the... This right here, the the kind of fading in and out logo is so eye-catching off the bat. Um, Possibly could have been a little bit smaller, but it actually fits not yeah. too bad. So I'm okay with it either way, but smaller... Yeah, I mean, the, the campaign's pretty much the same. Yeah. Now, uh, I remember his shipping was on the back end, so let's see what the shipping is now, if it's included or what. Shipping is go. included. Shipping. Perfect. A hundred percent the way to go. I think people yeah. like to know exactly what they're going to be paying. And here's the thing. People may back it and then get mad after the fact because they realize that they have to now pay shipping as well. I think that leaves yeah. a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. Focusing shipping during the campaign is absolutely crucial because it's a community standard. Like I don't think there's a lot of decks that do the other way. 
And so while maybe one day that may be the norm to do shipping after the fact, for now, it's so much easier to go with the flow on that one a little bit. And you're not really saving any money either way. You're just making people pay less at one point, but then they have to remember to still budget for that at another point in time. Being a hobby, budgets come into this a lot. It's a lot easier to budget for a one-time expense than a two-time expense. So, yeah, and I mean, the cool thing uh, you know that we see and that we always talk about is if something doesn't make it, you take it back to the drawing board, re-put it out, yeah. and uh, you know, and make changes. And you know, the the things that we see are the uh, the changes that were made were you know things that we felt could have used a little adjustment. So it's really cool to see that Arcadia, you know, Christian definitely took those into consideration and, and uh, made some changes. Yeah, and listen, I mean, right up off the top, overview there talks about USPCC fulfilled by gamblers, hits those points perfectly. $17 shipped price point for a fully custom magicians-oriented deck with the green being unmarked and the red being marked. Awesome opportunity, and it's a great price point there. Um, the deck's yeah. dope looking. It's got That's a cool deck. Yeah, I love this deck. It's got a really vintage vibe, which I like about it. For anyone watching, make sure to stick around to the end to find out which deck Steve and I would be backing this week. I'm going to give a little hint. I back this deck. <laughs> oh my gosh. Steve, you've ruined it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I like the, and I also like the fact that Christian having created previous decks also has the opportunity to pick up some of his previous decks. If you missed them yeah. here, it's always a smart idea as a creator to offer your back, uh, your back catalog. If you have it available, um, Project will be fulfilled by gamblers, our trusted fulfillment partner. They ship the packages safely. Okay, note that everyone. Ledge box will be used with similar to backer camp. Just a different. Okay. Maybe a new a new company or something. Yeah, very cool. Good luck, nice. Christian. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have the. What's up? I said it was well put together. Yeah, no doubt. All right. Next up, we have the fall reflections playing cards here. Let's see what we got. All Reflections hand-painted playing cards. Our canvas, your cards, made by creating and photographing actual paintings. I always love seeing uh, decks like this because I love the artistic detail that goes into it. I think it's really, from an art point of view, just next level compared to something that's actually designed for a card. Something that's designed large scale and shrunk down to fit a card is just, I think you get a lot more detail sometimes. Let's see here. Exclusively limited to 2,500x, no reprints, proudly made in a matte box featuring Fall Reflections. First deck ever. Okay. Portamundi, B9, Slimline. Designed from actual oil on canvas? In the sense that like they that. in the sense that they painted oil on canvas paintings, then took pictures to put on the card. Yeah, but hasn't that happened with like Congress decks? Isn't Congress decks a lot of that stuff? That's not the same thing, though. These were actually designed from the paintings. Congress decks are basically just prints of paintings. They're not necessarily... It's a slight nuance, <laughs> but a Congress deck is made from taking a print of an original art piece. They're not going there and photographing a Monet because no one would do that to put on the back of a deck of cards. In this case, these were actually physical oil paintings that we're taking photos of. Oh, so, so like it's not... Okay, yeah. gotcha. So again, probably a very minute distinction, but that's why that statement probably is factually true. Or, you know, if anyone knows yeah. of another deck... Paperwave worked with uh, with uh, an artist that, um, and they used an old painting of the artist. Um, the Venomous is actually a painting cool. from an artist. May not be... But I don't may know, not... I think it was probably digitally... I mean, they might have took the picture and digitally yeah. done it. And, and I mean, listen, at the end of the day, that's a nitpick point. I don't think that makes any difference into whether or not the campaign is good or not. It is what it is. Uh, no, of course not. Yeah. And this this definitely looks different than, obviously, that deck. Yeah. You know, so it's definitely um, 100%. It looks like an oil painting on a tuck box, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. housed in a box made of premium matte paper imported from Belgium. So, printed by Cardamundi. I think the one thing I would throw in this key features aspect up here is just fulfillment. I think it makes sense. Um, dope photos of the back design. Really well, concise, put together points for the discussion of the cards themselves. Uh, I like the color. The colors are really cool. Yeah, very fall oriented. I think it's a fun looking deck. And if you like bears, like this is dope. Fully custom quartz. Really awesome. And it does... Definitely a 
prototype deck. Yeah, because it's funny, like, for me, from a collector point of view, I actually don't mind the thick kind of, like, built-in borders there, but you can tell they're built for visual elements, and that's why they are so thick. Yeah, yeah this is a dope deck. Um, and let's see what we got here. What did that say? Uh, one, a little bit more. Right there. The cards will be coded with the legendary true linen. Oh, okay. Go up one more then. Maybe I thought this one I read. Brown Bear. Oh, yeah, right here. Firefly will be printed on a custom Brown Bear deck stock? Yeah. What's that? We should. I don't know. I've never heard of that. Interesting. So, yeah. Brown deck stock? I mean, maybe they're using a deck stock custom to them who knows i i don't know if card of money actually offers the option to send your own stock but we can reach out and find out yeah that'd be interesting to know if anybody knows leave us uh i mean we can also reach out to brown bear and ask you yeah, we'll reach out to brown bear and ask It'd be a lot quicker <laughs> with orders of three decks or more backers we'll receive access for free to official brown bear. Uh, cool so there's also tutorials involved with this which i think is fun um limited edition always have a, a nice little addition uh, to a campaign if you're giving tutorials or a course or something like that yeah i think the other thing about this too the one thing i will say is i think the price point's a little high for what it is i know a lot of work went into this but 24 dollars shipped for a cardistry deck is pricey um yeah. it makes it difficult because you're looking at something that really it's visually very appealing and i think it's funny too because i think this deck itself probably would appeal more so to a collector's market than anything like to me that's the standout on this um I can see the yeah, card issue. For one deck is, is pretty high. Yeah. I can hear the card. I, I can like see the cardistry appeal to it, but even on a collector side, $24 is a bit high. Um, yeah. For a cardistry deck, $18, $19, I think is the price point you really want to hit shipped. So hopefully this doesn't hold that back at all. Um, I would also say, because I haven't seen the fulfillment discussed anywhere yet. Oh, there we go. Art of play. Okay, cool. So I would bring that up to the top a little bit just to mention that it's going to be an order to play fulfilled deck. It makes it all concise and that key features like I mentioned. But yeah, that price point's just a little high with the shipping. It's something that I'd say... Probably an art of play thing, maybe? Well, the shipping at $8 is the standard art of, pay, art of play rate. But then that means that it's $16 for the deck. It may have been that it would have been better to bring the deck price down to like 12 So you would have been hitting dead on at that 20 and it would have been a little more reasonable. But... Good luck with it. I think there's a lot of potential with this deck either way, and I do hope that being such a artistically designed and creative deck, if this does not fund, there's definitely a large chance that it's because of the timing of the year. Also, though, that price point coming down would help a lot, so good luck with the campaign. I definitely think in 27 days, there's a lot of opportunity to push momentum behind this, but if for whatever reason it doesn't fund, don't give up on this. This is an awesome deck. Yeah, I think it's really cool. You know, it's a one-way back design. Um... You know, and that, that tuck box is super cool. Is it a one-way back design? Uh, yeah, looks it. That's the back design. I don't see the one way. Uh, you can just look at the streaks uh, on top of the bear. Hold on, let me get a closer picture. I don't... Um... Yeah, look. Yeah, so this is this is a good point then to make here. A good picture of the back design would be helpful, like a clear shot of the back design. Yeah, I mean that's a good picture right there. So if you if you look at the the top right above the bear, like in the where that tree is, like right, you see that pink and that blue. Oh yeah, interesting. Okay. Not on the other side, so it's definitely a one way. So yeah, there. subtle one way, but nice. Okay, yeah. So. Good luck with the campaign either way. And like I said, I think uh, if this doesn't fun first time around, definitely bring it back to the drawing board because there's a lot of potential with this deck. Yeah, it's pretty. Next up, we have the Cardistry 5th Anniversary playing cards from Handlords. Um, low goal as per normal with Handlords. Again, we kind of discussed this earlier. These decks are always fun, so I get why they do that. It's to get this little, put this little funded in minutes sticker here and have a larger than usual percent I, I don't personally like that. I think it's, it lacks transparency, and it makes this yeah. somewhat of a hype deck. F you know, they're, they're building unjust hype behind it. The deck itself should be able to stand right. on its own. Um, what are we looking at here? Hot, this bicycle car. Yeah. So 
here's the other thing about this. I, again, I think we tell, talk a lot about storytelling. And while there is a story here, to me, it comes off like someone's trying to sell me a used car. More so than like trying to bring me into the fold of an awesome project that I want to be a part of. And I think that's one of the things that is important when you're considering the story you're telling with your Kickstarter is being as genuine as possible with your story and realizing that it's about the deck and the community and the support more so than you. You are yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of like this, this paragraph right here is on every campaign and it's more so not even about this deck. It's about another deck. Um, yeah. You know, that's, that has been used on a, you know, a couple videos. And, and, and I think, yeah, that's makes a good point. Here's the thing. If you have a successful campaign style, that's great. You now have a template. A template doesn't mean copy and paste the same information for every campaign. And there may be things in here that are changed a little bit to kind of make them specific to this. But I genuinely think that it's important to make each campaign feel unique. So let's, what are we looking at here? $20 shipped. Um, it's metallic ink. I yeah, think, metallic right? gold ink. So again, that falls into a price point that I think is reasonable for the metallic ink. Um for a cardistry deck, though, I still think that it makes a lot of sense to get this more in the 16 to 18 price point because I think it becomes a little more competitive there. But the campaign's funded. I mean, DeVoe will always fund, and that's great. I think it's awesome that he has a, de a devoted following behind him. You know, I just... Ooh, see what you did there? What? Devoted follower? Oh, that was 100% <laughs> unintended. But I think the one interesting thing about this is that even if you have a... a consistent following you also want to make sure that you're trying to branch out to new people as well and make your campaign as interesting and in theme with what kickstarter is about as possible um yeah yeah i mean it might be a, a, you know if you change up the words and, and and how you're bringing the deck to the audience i mean you could double that uh you know for another campaign rather than coming in with the same template so to speak yeah you know no without a doubt plus i, I would say to bring up a uh, printer and fulfillment closer to the top as well the information is in here but it's very much buried towards the bottom you know what that who's printing yep. it uspcc yeah, awesome gamblers yep. fulfilling but th that information up here somewhere in the uh, the copy up here would be a little more helpful a little more concise so Again, already funded. Good luck. DeVoe really does manage to create a lot of decks that fund consistently. I think it's a great thing, and I think it's it's awesome to see that he's turned this into a sustainable business. But I also think that it's important to always, you know, just don't rely on what you consider successful. You always want to be evolving. So yeah, I'd like to see bullet points off that top. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Half rather than it's just it's a little busy for me, you know. Yeah. Next up, we have the Lunar and Zodiac Year of the Snake, which again is also funded. Yeah, so congrats. This is, and here's the thing though, like I have to say, this is actually a perfect example of what we just talked about there, is that no, yeah. Nomad's playing cards, also very successful with their, their Zodiac sets. They have a template that works, and yet you go into it and every single campaign feels unique to that deck. Yeah. You know, this is where... It's also not about their brand, like their brand fulfilling every other deck yeah. it's about this deck they talk about it you know down the bottom i'm sure they'll have you know information where you can pick up the older zodiac decks um, yeah i think usually they have a tier where you can pick up the, the entire like set yeah but that's also like down the bottom after they go through the campaign for that current deck. Yeah, right? which again is a smart idea. I also like the fact that they touch on risks and challenges. It's not just like, a, we're going to print these and then ship them to you. Um, printed by NPC, fulfilled by Noir Arts, which is an arm of NPCC. Um, I would like to see that information a little bit closer up top, especially because they do have a pretty hefty... What's it say there? Oh, on the features? It doesn't have like any that. of it. Uh, well, printed by NPC, but it doesn't talk about fulfillment. I think something up top, though, would be a little more concise with it because they do have the time here. This campaign, you know, right in this paragraph here, right under it, three or four bullet points to say printer, stock, fulfillment. Yeah, the featured section should be right there underneath those two paragraphs. Well, the featured section deals specifically with the deck. That's why I think they have it separately there, features of the deck. I think if they just had like an overview section here and kept the deck where it is, it makes a little bit of sense. I don't think they necessarily... Again, this is one of those things where duplicating important information in a campaign 
is not a problem. You don't want to duplicate everything. You don't want to duplicate unnecessarily unnecessary information, but duplicating some stuff like printer and fulfillment doesn't hurt because you're reinforcing those points that people are going to question. Yeah. Or, or like, you know, or you just put it up at the top. Like we always state that way. There's no question about it. You know, you, it's the first thing you read that way when you're going through it, you already know. Yeah. And yeah, like even if you put it down the bottom, just to kind of reiterate it, as long as it's in a couple places, it's not a bad thing. But, you know, like we always say, it, it's really good to keep it up at the top, um, you know, first thing. So, yeah. uh, so we don't have to scroll through trying to find it. $19 shipped for the deck, which is phenomenal considering it's fully custom, foil and embossing on the tuck. They know the price point and they hit it every time. Uh, and like I said, they've already doubled their goal. So congratulations to you guys on that one. Looking forward to see that successfully fund. They have five more to go after this one. Yeah. Next up, we have the... Balloon playing cards, the BPC prototypes. Um, this is actually a relaunch, and it looks like they lowered the goal to really just get this out, I think, to people who were interested in backing it from the last campaign. Yeah. Which, you know what, I don't think is a bad thing. If you're really, and you know, this is something that Jackson mentioned to us in a couple times in some of the shows we talked about. If you're looking to get a deck out there, get it out by any means necessary. If you put up a campaign and it doesn't fund and you want to get it funded still, reach out to the backers and see who's really interested in it and maybe do a small print run through MPC for just those people. The price point may be a little higher, but you're still getting the deck out there. Um, my main concern with this deck, and I mentioned it last time as well, is I think that using the art of Banksy has some licensing issues potentially. Even if you are reworking... Like, influenced by the artist is one thing. I'm pretty sure that is, like, dead on his artwork on the back inside of yeah. the bubbles. Like, inspiration usually doesn't mean using their exact design. It usually means using their design as a as a foundation to build your own design around. Um, so that's the only thing that really stands out to me on this as a potential issue. I also think that the campaign itself, again being thrown together for its purpose of getting those funder those backers the opportunity to fund this it probably wasn't thrown together as cohesively or as completely as it could have been because there was a very short time frame end goal there so we're not seeing the back design in a large format we're not seeing the cards themselves in a large format other than the joker here um which i think is aaron no it's um i can't remember his name now but he's another he's the other magician involved with this uh project so yeah i think the one thing with this is if this was going out there to be pushed as a full campaign and not just for something for the interested backers to pick up so they could have this i'd say throw in a lot more images throw in a lot more of the story make sure you have the licensing taken care of all of these kind of aspects but because i know that this is really just trying to get out there so there's 12 15 people who liked it on the first time can back it and get it done this makes sense it's concise and to the point um Let's see what we got here. Support the card prototype, shuffled ink, premium cardstock, uh, fourteen dollars shipped. So I yeah I would say put in who's going to be printing and fulfilling probably over here instead of in the tiers. It kind of helps remove some of that repetition on the tier side. Um, What's the fifty dollar? Was there a fifty dollar tier there? Yeah, right there. Yeah, oh. half brick. Right, right. yeah. That's right. So, and yeah, if it hits a goal, a stretch goal of 6,000, be printed by USPCC. I think the um, the other interesting thing about that... Print that, right? What? Would they even print that with the Banksy image on that? And that would be something you'd have to find out. They probably yeah. would not be willing to because they're really thorough in their licensing checks. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and it's interesting to put a stretch goal, though, too, because, again, I think, you know, there's obviously a specific goal in mind with this campaign, and it's to get yeah. it funded for the few backers who want it. Putting stretch goals in there is kind of counter to the way the campaign's built, but I think it's still good to include. So on the off chance it gets to there, cool. Um, glad to see it's already funded though for those who wanted it. So good luck, Aaron. And can't see what can't wait to see what else you come out with. So next up we have the bod playing cards. <clears throat> Let's see what we got here. It's a bad. Uh, see, perfect story right there. Short, but ties that emotional aspect through to the deck. I will say again, I don't think images like this provide as much value as people think. You can't click on it to make it bigger. 
you can't really see what the jokers are in a clean way it doesn't highlight the back design of the gaff as much as you'd want um breaking this into maybe like five different images especially with a standard deck you could probably say that the number cards and the courts are standard and then just show the gaffs and maybe some close-up of the courts make it a little more you know clean all right so you talk about the two two custom ones there all right yeah so honestly with what you have here showing the detail this top image here almost becomes unnecessary so I do like the close-ups. I think you probably could have brought some of these on the same level. Yep. But, oh, not bad. Redrawn cards, gaff cards, secret magic trid hidden inside this deck. Images look good. The story's great up top. Um, printing and fulfillment. Definitely bring this up to the top section. Or duplicate it in the top section. Manufactured by USPCC, classic stock, um, air cushion, traditionally cut, limited to a thousand. Awesome. Fulfilled by Gamblers. Gamblers does also have a smaller logo you could have used there, but I think that's great. You're using the images. Yeah. And then, see what else? There's an actual risks and challenges here as well, which I think is phenomenal. I think that's something more campaigns really need to uh, start touching on. So this is a a good looking risks and challenges see what we're looking at deck wise so this is where yeah this is steep and the funny thing is though like this print this fulfillment makes zero sense this is being fulfilled by gamblers in the u.s this should be five dollars yeah like there's no reason i wonder if there's just an error yeah or... that and, and so yeah i'll reach out because i know uh Bod Playing Cards just started following us recently, so we can have a discussion with them on that. But yeah, gamblers, yeah. gambler shipping within the U.S. is almost always five dollars flat. Um, this would put it to twenty one dollars, and I think for the fact that there's some included magic, I believe I don't know if there was a tutorial or anything like that. But let's see. I mean, I, I still think it's it's a little high. It's 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 a yeah. Nah. I mean, this deck should be you know a twelve dollar deck. Yeah, seventeen shipped. Uh -huh. Even even with the, I mean, it's not like it's a, you know, it's a tutorial with the gaff card that comes with the card, I mean, with the deck. So I, I think, you know, the $12 tops for this deck is probably where we'd want to see it. And then $5 shipped would be $17 in the U.S. Yeah. And I think that's something to consider too, is like, if you're going to include a download as a free download, don't bury the cost in there, actually make it a free download or say, you know, this is a $5 value. Have that value included there so people understand what that added benefit is from the campaign download there. But yeah, $12, 12 to 14 plus $5 shipping on this, I think makes the most sense because it's a worker's deck in theory. You want it to be available at a price point that's going to be worthwhile, especially when people are sitting there saying, okay, I can go out and get a brick of tally hose for nothing. I mean, not obviously yep. nothing, but very inexpensive in comparison. Um, I would definitely say check out the shipping on this one, though. It's a little confusing as to why it's so high, considering we've seen Gambler's price point throughout most campaigns. Um, yeah, otherwise, the campaign looks good. Like I said, I'd bring the, the features portion up right under the story here, printed by, you know, USPCC, fulfilled by Gambler's, classic stock. I like the stretch goals that they have on this, the idea that they're going to be potentially going to crush stock for this. Um, for a Magician's deck, that may actually turn some people off because I feel like some Magicians don't like Crush Stock as much due to the durability. But I also like the idea that there's going to be potentially a smooth finish for uh, another stretch goal because we don't actually see that very often as a stretch goal. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, um, yeah, I think that the shipping is the biggest thing that jumps out to me as an issue. But otherwise, I think this campaign is pretty well put together. Also, I would yep. say that um, the long-term... On the goal, it's not worthwhile. There have been a lot of uh, analytics around the idea of a 30-day campaign being the prime point. And if you don't fund within those 30 days, very rarely you're going to fund beyond it. Um, 30 days are worth is a worthwhile time frame. And in that same vein, if you don't fund within 30 days and you still have 24 days to do it and you're going to self-fund, you're better off self-funding in the beginning so that it creates that momentum behind it. Or just relaunching with a more reasonable time frame and tweaking the issues that may have caused you to not fund in the first place. So, yeah, good luck. Steve, that is it for the week. That's it, huh? What are you backing? 
Um, Arcadia. Um, what else? Maybe the bear. They're a little pricey. Um, but but they're, I like the colors. They're really, those pastel -y, like, fall colors definitely remind me, you know, it gives me that, um, that forest feel where, where I'd see a bear, you know, it's yeah. really cool. Um, yeah, those two right there, fall reflections and Harmony back. Yeah, I would, I'm on board with both those. I agree that fall reflections needs shipping tweaked a little bit. Um, to some extent too, I dig the spaghetti deck, but again, shipping is just way too high on that one. So... And I, I really do like the creativity behind the Nobel Prize, Nobel Prize series playing cards. Um, not really my style, but I really do appreciate the ingenuity with that flask case there. Yeah. Hummingbird feathers mimics the shimmer of a hummingbird in motion. Meticulously created with a specialized printing process using multiple holographic foils. Stunning tuck design and sculpted embossing with master letterpress creation. Featuring limited, standard, and gilded three-deck sets. Pre-order yours today at MarvelousDecks.com. Well, thank you everyone for checking out this episode of Decking Around Kickstarter Edition. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We drop these every Monday, taking a look at the newest decks on Kickstarter and giving you our take.